Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and you guys asked for it, so here we go. We've got part two of our best knives from every brand series. Let's check them out. All right, got some more cool folders to take a look at today. Uh, we're saving fixed blades for a part three, so make sure to, uh, to keep an eye out for that and uh, no hollering at me for not having any fixed blades on this one. They're gonna get their own spotlight for sure. Um, but these are some more brands that you didn't see in the first video. Now, as far as the knives on the table here today, these are of course brands you didn't see in the, uh, the first edition or the part one of these videos. Um, but as for how we selected them, in some of these cases, it's, it's almost a no brainer. You say this brand, oh, that's the knife. Uh, Chris Reeve comes to mind, which you'll see in a second. Um, but it's not always the most iconic knife from a particular company. It might be, um, but it might not be. There might be some other things that influence us, uh, such as usability or just really smart design or showcasing what a manufacturer is capable of that earns them the spot on this list today for the best representation of that brand. And ultimately that's what this list is. If you're looking into one of these brands and you don't have one of their knives yet, and you're not quite sure where to start. These are going to be the ones to go with. And we're going to start, uh, go through these alphabetically, just like before these aren't ranked in any kind of uh, hierarchy here. So we'll start with artisan cutlery. Uh, we showed you, um, we kind of combined artisan and CJRB in the previous video and CJRB, one of the CJRB knives took the spot. So we're breaking them back out and showing you the more premium siblings. And this is the small Archeo non-locking flipper. Uh, and what's special about this and special about what artisan does kind of in general is while everyone else out there seems to be trying to crank out the latest variation of the titanium frame lock flipper, Artisan certainly does that too, but they're putting a lot of their primary energy towards doing things a little bit different. That's how we get cool things like this knife. Now the Archeo uh, didn't start life as a non-locking folder. It actually started as another flipper, uh, a liner lock flipper in this case, and you can get it in a large or a small, but the small non-locking version is exclusive here to the Knife Center, and we couldn't be happier because it really came into its own when it, uh, when it ditched the lock essentially to become this knife here. We've got a three inch blade. This particular one has a VG10 Damascus. We've also got an RPM nine steeled variant. Uh, and we've got pack of wood handles on this version as well. Price on these Damascus versions come in about a hundred bucks. Uh, but for a little bit less, you can get the, uh, the non Damascus versions. And what's cool about the non locking nature, it's not a traditional slip joint. You've got a detent bar in the side of the handle. But when you combine that with a flipper tab, you can actually flip this non-locking knife open very easily and flick it closed too. But if you're a little concerned about safety, you've got that flipper tab on the front side. So if the blade does disengage, your finger's in the way to keep it from closing. And on top of that, a small hardened pin that you can insert behind the tang of the knife. That's gonna hold it open and it's gonna hold it closed too if you use it in that position. So there's really a lot going for it in terms of being a knife that is gonna be kind of copacetic to carry it just about everywhere. But on top of that, it's just a really nice shape for a small EDC knife in general. So speaking of small EDC knives, we come to case knives and it's gotta be the peanut. I know what you're thinking, why such a small knife? Uh, it is obviously a very unassuming profile, but it's, it's just one of those kind of magical items in cases lineup. It, definitely feels like you get a lot more capability out of it than the size would suggest. And especially for a brand so steeped in heritage that you like to kind of feel those good, warm, fuzzy thoughts inside. I don't think anything else in cases lineup inspires such fuzzy thoughts as the peanut, especially for folks who have carried these and used them and know just how useful they are. This particular one has a jigged amber bone handle but it's case, so you've got plenty of different handle options available. Uh, and that brings this one in at about $49 right now. The peanut gives you two blades, a standard clip point shape and a smaller pen blade, or you call it a spear point. Um, decent amount of, of edge there in such a small package when you combine the two of them together. But then especially on the, uh, the full size clip point blade, it feels almost like it's longer than it is. And some of that might have to do with the fact that because it's a small handle, 
you're not really inclined to kind of go after bigger cutting jobs with it so that when you do bring this to bear on whatever you're trying to cut, there's always plenty there. It always has what you need to get those daily tasks done. It doesn't take up a lot of room in your pocket. It can even fit in that little fifth jeans pocket quite nicely. And it's just that trusty companion that's always gonna be there for you. All right, next up, we come to Chris Reeve knives and there really is only one right answer, the Sebenza. Currently, the Sebenza 31 in its current incarnation. And what's more to say, it's kind of like the peanut. This is a bona fide classic at this point. Uh, obviously, it's gone, undergone a few small changes over the years, but it's still instantly recognizable as a Sebenza. And it's just one of those rock solid folders that never goes out of style as well. Blades on these guys are S35VN, comes in uh, about 3.6 inches, very instantly recognizable drop point shape with a nice keen hollow grind going on. But there's also a sheep's foot profile and a Tonto, uh, that sheep's foot profile they call their Incosi profile. Very usable patterns no matter which one you choose. Handles are full titanium, no, uh, no excess milling or anything on the inside. These are just solid slabs ready to work, very tough. And then on the backside you have commonly known today as the frame lock, but this is the Chris Reeve integral lock invented in fact by Chris Reeve. And obviously this is a lock that has proliferated across the, uh, across the knife world. You can't, uh, can't shake a stick around here without hitting a titanium frame lock. This was the archetype. It's certainly a solid folder. Uh, like I said, really solid user. It's built to take a beating despite being a fancier knife. Uh, you've got washers here in the pivot as opposed to ball bearings, which a lot of newer knives like to use, but they go for the stability provided by the bearings or by the washers in this case. And one of the other things you'll see on this particular knife that comes in uh, a bit more expensive than the standard model, uh, the standards start under 500. This guy is about 600 right here, is you've got some really nice CGG is what they call it, computer generated graphics here on the front titanium piece here. They, they'll produce these for a little while and then kind of phase them out and come out with new patterns over time. So certainly caters to the collectors out there, but you've got a really, really awesome look, especially if you're waiting for just the right Sebenza and you see that CGG model that, you, that really clicks with you. You've got something that very few people in the world are gonna have, and that's just one more thing, kind of the cherry on top of this special, special knife. All right, next up, we've got Emerson with their CQC seven, uh, probably maybe not their flagship model, but something of a signature in their lineup. Uh, and one of the most recognizable, maybe not most recognizable, but one of the most respected combat folders out there today. Price on this guy here comes in about 190 for this version. The blade is about 3.3 inches long CPM 154 steel in this case. And it's kind of got the three or three signature elements that, uh, that make up a lot of Emerson's designs. Uh, for one, you've got a chisel grind on this guy. So the backside doesn't feature a secondary bevel here, which is appreciated by certain schools of tactical thought. You've also got a combo edge on this particular version. You've also got the dual opening methods that Emerson's typically come with. You've got for one thing, ambidextrous thumb disc here that makes it very easy to open one handed with either hand. And you've also got a feature that they've patented called the wave, which is essentially like the original pocket deployer, or at least the folks that brought it to prominence anyway. And you've got this small hook here. For one thing, it does make a nice ramp for your, uh, for your thumb when you're engaging in certain grips, but as you draw it from your pocket, you can angle it so that that hook catches the hem of your pocket and rotates the blade open so it's ready to go as soon as you draw it. Really, it kind of evens out the speed advantage that a fixed blade tactical knife would usually have, especially when you've trained up properly on how to operate one of these and how to deploy it repeatedly and dependably. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of respect baked into that feature. Now the handles here are simple black G10. Got a fair bit of texture for grip, uh, but interestingly, uh, I'll have to see how this plays out in the future, but there seems to be a little bit less texture than they've kind of famously been known for. They, they've always been known for having texture that might've been too aggressive for some. Uh, they may have toned things down a little bit. I don't know. Check back, keep an eye on this channel and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can, we can find more out about that in the future. Uh, we've also got a liner lock here uh, and the liners on both sides are made out of titanium. And it's just one of those classic 
unmistakable tactical knives. And if you're looking to get into a true Emerson, this is definitely the place to start. All right, next up, uh, we go to Italy and apologies to my Italian friends. I left all of, uh, I didn't include a single Italian brand in our, uh, our part one of this series. So I'm gonna make up for that now, uh, starting with Lion Steel. And this is the rock model, uh, comes in uh, about 225 or a little north of that. And Lion Steel has, has really pushed the boundaries in the last decade, especially with their manufacturing techniques. They've won a ton of awards at like blade shows every year. And this design here, the rock kind of takes everything, takes all of their signature elements and puts them into one single platform. And thankfully they've kept it on a, a very usable platform too. They didn't go crazy with the blade shape so that it was just a showpiece. You can absolutely use the heck out of this knife. The first and foremost signature element is the integral construction. This handle is milled out of aluminum and it is one single piece. You don't have a backspacer or posts here uh, along the spine connecting the two sides. So you get a lot of strength and rigidity. It just makes a rock solid stable platform for the rest of the knife to live on. Also usually makes them fairly comfortable too since you actually have typically a rounded section here at the back that really doesn't dig into your hand when you really grip it hard. Speaking of that, I'll talk about the pocket clip next. Um, they want to keep that pocket clip from digging into you as well. And as such, it actually sits flush with the handle when you're not using it. They call this their H whale pocket clip system. And if you look at the button on the other side, push that guy up and it pops the pocket clip out. So as you're closing or as you're pocketing the knife, you just push that button out, slip it into your pocket and let go. Then when you go to draw the pocket or draw the knife, as you saw, it's spring loaded, so it pulls right back there, pulls flush, and you're not gonna have a hot spot from that pocket clip. Very cool feature. You'll also see their signature roto block system, which is this disc right here, which does two things actually. For one, it mimics a feature that was kind of pioneered by Rick Hinderer, which you'll see on this uh, ZT later on, but it works as an over travel arrester. So if you're pushing the, uh, the lock bar out, it's gonna keep the bar from being pushed out too far. But in addition to that, with a simple twist right there, it actually locks that lock bar into place. So you can't actually unlock the knife blade, which, you know, a frame lock is not likely to come undone when you're you know, doing work with it, but this is one extra degree of peace of mind. Last signature element is actually the flipper tab, which if you don't want it there, you can remove it. You can actually unscrew the uh, little set screw there and take that piece off. Not really something that uh, is gonna be a concern for most folks, but for the Italians, especially living in the European Union, there are certain places where a one hand opening knife, uh, there are certain restrictions placed on those. So you can remove that uh, from this particular knife to, to not have to worry about those so much. It is kind of a shame though, because the flipping action is quite nice. One of the other things we see from a lot of the Italians as well is a crown spine. So that's nice and comfortable here when you're choking up with an extra finger. That blade itself, uh, about 3.4 inches M390 steel. And you can get it without the black coating, of course, but when you combine orange and black like this, definitely striking. All right, next up we come to Microtech. And uh, this one actually kind of surprised me. I, I pulled the audience here at, uh, at work a little bit um, and they, they influenced me to change my mind. But for Microtech, we're going with the SOCOM uh, for a couple reasons. One, it is available as a manual knife, not just as an automatic, which is of course Microtech's bread and butter, but also for some folks out there, this is one of the finest tactical knives that has ever hit the market. Um, not to start any kind of fight between the SOCOM and the uh, CQC7, that would be a, that'd be a cage match for sure. But this SOCOM is an excellently designed knife. Now this particular one has seen some better days. Uh, this belongs to one of our uh, one of our buyers here at the Knife Center and has put this through the ringer over the last couple of years and has certainly shrugged off, uh, shrugged off all of the abuse he could throw at it. Four inch blade, uh, in this case, we've got M390 steel, but that changes up a little bit. Uh, pr prices on these, uh, when you can get them, start at about 290. So not terribly priced when you compare it to some of their automatics. In addition to the clip point profile, you can also get Tontos for folks who like that. But where it really comes into its own or where things really kind of snap into focus is when you grip the knife and feel just how nicely designed it is and how well it orients the blade for actual use. 
My favorite feature on it is actually the thumb ramp here. You'll see thumb ramps integrated into the spine of a blade quite often. For example, that, uh, that Emerson right there. But with this, they've left it as part of the entire handle here. And the, as a result, you get a much wider contact patch. So for one, you get more control, but it's also much more comfortable than just the spine of the blade digging into your thumb. There's certainly a lot to be said for that, those two things together, when you really need to depend on a knife like this. Now the handles are aluminum. This particular one has a nice burgundy color and you can, they come with inlays. This one has carbon fiber, but you'll see some grippier inserts in there as well. And then on the back, you've got a glass breaker there on the end too. Really not a lot to complain about on this knife, uh, unless you're someone who likes to carry tip up, you're not going to be able to do that in this particular case. But if you're all right, not doing that, you really can't go wrong with this knife. All right, next up, we're back to Italy with the MKM Flame. Uh, and MKM is the Maniago Knife Makers, which is kind of a partnership of sorts uh, between several of Italy's, uh, Maniago specifically's finest knife makers. Lion Steel's actually one of those. Uh, I'm not sure which one of them make this particular knife, but it doesn't matter that much because it is quite good. This is of course based on Michael Ziba's very popular MS3 design, which makes a fantastic executive knife, especially a smaller gentleman's knife. You're gonna really appreciate this uh, for a more premium option. Uh, they're priced pretty well. This one is the Micarta version, but you can get full titanium or carbon fibers as well. Um, but this one starts about 185. Blade length is under three inches, M390 in this particular case. And it's one of those knives that almost completely disappears when you fold it into the handle. You've got just a hint of flipper tab and just a hint of the spine right here near the top. You're not really gonna notice that too much. It flips open quite nicely as well. Ball bearings in the pivot. And it's got kind of a, uh, you can kind of think of this as if someone today were trying to design an old school pen knife, but using completely modern techniques and modern design features and materials, this would be kind of where you would, uh, would end up. Feels good in nice controlled grips. You've got a contour to the handles themselves and a milled pocket clip here for right side carry. One of the cool features too is all the, uh, the adjustment screws are just standard flathead. You're not gonna need any kind of Torx or anything like that. Um, speaking of the pivot here on the front with that hardware, that little gold pivot collar is a really awesome accent against that green. But if you want that, want the fancier ones, again, go with the, tar with the uh, titanium or one of the carbon fiber models, but all of them are pretty awesome. All right, now we come to Ontario with their famous Rat Model 1. Uh, you can kind of lump the Rat Model 2 into this uh, discussion as well, just a smaller form factor of this. And this is one of their least expensive knives. Uh, base models of this start uh, about 30 or so, actually a little bit less, I think, in some cases. Uh, but for this particular discussion, I think the D2 version especially uh, deserves the top spot, and they come in about 40 bucks right now. Now the blade shape and the handle here come together uh, into a really solid platform, a uh, little bit girthier. It's not like a, a super lightweight EDC. You've got full steel liners on these guys, but definitely a favorite choice for folks who like to go camping. Great camping folder, bushcrafters, survivalists all love this because it's very capable. It's got just the right kind of blade shape you need for that. And they're very affordable. You can kind of stash some of these everywhere and put them in any kind of extra kit you might need. Blade length is about 3.6 D2, like I said, with this nice drop point profile. Plenty of belly here if you do have to use a, a folder for a hunting knife, but you've got a full flat grind for great slicing in all other instances. Now the handles are just a simple nylon. It's part of the things that, uh, one of the things that helps keep the cost down a little bit, but there's plenty of length there, even for folks with larger than average hands like myself. I got plenty of length there. Fair bit away from the edge, and there's no finger choil to choke up on, but the ricasso and the front of the handle there do make a nice flat spot where you can choke your finger up there to get uh, some slightly different grips on this blade going on. Also got a four position pocket clip on those handles. And one other thing to note about those is because this is kind of a simply constructed knife, like I said, you got full stainless steel liners here. There are folks that really like to use this knife as a platform for modding, whether they're gonna modify what's here or create their own custom handle scales for it. Because you've just got simple liners, like I said, full stainless steel, you just have to match up the shapes essentially, and you can do a really nice job getting some really nice and really cool custom work done without having to buy a super expensive knife to do it on. All in all, very cool too. 
All right, next up we come to ProTech, uh, and this is another one we had a uh, kind of wringing our hands a little bit over the top spot. Uh, but in the end, I think I've got to give it to the Godson and the larger Godfather uh, automatics from ProTech. Uh, we almost gave it to the Malibu, which has been kind of unobtainium the, since they, uh, they introduced it last year. Um, only because I think nothing they've made has really made a splash quite like the Malibu has. But there's just something about this classic knife, kind of one of their signature designs that we keep coming back to and, and really kind of earned its spot on the list today. Now the Godsons are just the shorter version of the Godfather. The blades on these guys are a little bit over three inches. Uh, prices start at about 140 for plain aluminum models, but they go on up. Sky's kind of the limit. They've done some truly insanely beautiful pieces over the years. This particular one uh, just has a carbon fiber inlay with an anodized aluminum handle. We've also got a Damascus blade in this case, and this guy comes in about 525 right now. It's kind of a sleek, modernized take on the classic Italian stiletto knife. And I really like kind of the, the simplified lines of this knife. There's something, the proportions and the, and the lines of it are just about right in a very minimalistly perfect kind of way. And speaking of perfect, we got to talk about Protex Action. Push that button and it's just a solid side opening automatic that I think really sets the, uh, is kind of the bar in the, the side opening automatic game these days. Like if, if anyone's gonna be benchmarked for their action, it's certainly gonna be ProTech. But yeah, I really can't say a bad thing about this particular knife. It's just that good. Uh, I, guess, I guess the only negative I can say about it is it is an automatic. And if you, uh, you can't carry an auto, hold out for a Malibu and, uh, and, you'll, be, <laughs> and you'll be happy with that as well. All right, next up though, we're coming to Real Steel with their Luna Light, one of their more recent knives they've introduced, um, but it's also made quite a big impact in a very short amount of time. This particular version with uh, the white G10 and black coated D2 blade is a knife center exclusive here for us, comes in about 30 bucks. And really that's part of the key to why this is such a, a popular knife is you've got some really good construction going on, good materials at that $30 price point. This is a slip joint knife. This is not a locking knife, but unlike a lot of old school slip joints like that case peanut, we've actually got a pocket clip on this guy. And it's a nice narrow pocket clip. It doesn't really scream uh, that you're carrying a knife. It's gonna be black, so it's gonna blend into a lot of different pants you might be wearing it with. And being so narrow, it's gonna be very unobtrusive. The blade itself is also, I think just about a perfect shape for a small blade like this. You've got a good amount of belly here, nice full flat grind, and of course that D2 steel to hold a good edge. It's just gonna be a really nice slicer and a really good uh, tip work detail knife as well. Of course, with any slip joint, do be careful when, uh, when you're using the tip, you don't want the knife to close on you. But the way they've kind of worked on the Ricasso here, you see there's a little bit of jimping and this it's not quite to the same degree of protection that that uh, artisan cutlery knife had from earlier. But if the blade does start to close, your finger is gonna do a little bit to keep it from closing further, as long as you're holding there on the, uh, on the front like that. And then even if that never becomes a concern because it's jimped, you can actually, without even looking at the knife, you can feel right where you are by that jimping. See, I'm not looking at the blade, but I can tell exactly where the handle ends so that I don't grip further forward onto the edge. Just a really nicely considered detail. All right, next up is Riot with their Jack 2.0 Integral Flipper. And this is, uh, this is kind of similar to that Lion Steel, kind of a showcase of what Riot can do. Um, they do a lot of their own branded stuff, but they actually make a lot of knives uh, as an OEM for other, other brands out there because they do such a good job. Like their, their tolerances are spot on. And so, so they really kind of wrapped up a lot of their capabilities into this design. Uh, now, unlike that Lion Steel, they went for a little more out there type of design. It's maybe a little less practical for EDC, but that doesn't make it any less impressive. The handles on this guy, integral titanium in this case, and inlaid in this particular one with burlap micarta, looks really good against that black stone washed finish. Uh, and these guys come in about 475 right now. The pivot obviously looks pretty cool. Uh, most of that, those extra screws are, are just for decoration. Uh, but the blade here uh, is really where things come together. It's four inches long, M390 steel, really nice horizontally grained finish here. 
has that kind of custom knife vibe to it, but it's actually a removable blade. The spine up here is that separate piece. You've got three screws. You can actually remove that blade and they include a, uh, a comb in the box as well. You could replace it with be probably the most expensive comb you've ever used. Um, again, not necessarily the most practical thing because you do have a little bit of a drag point here on the, uh, the spine mounting system for actual use, but it's not unusable certainly. And again, they're really going to show the quality of their manufacturing and the precision that they could really pull off because the, the join here is pretty much seamless and you can't pull off something like this with tolerances like this if you're not spot on with your manufacturing. And this knife absolutely proves that for Riyadh. All right, next up, we come to a much more reasonably priced uh, knife. Actually, it's kind of funny here on the table to see such an expensive knife sandwiched between two very reasonably priced knife. We come to Victorinox, the Swiss Army knife folks with the Pioneer. Uh, and th this was one of those no brainers as well. It had to be the Pioneer. These guys come in about 37 bucks right now. Uh, it's not the most extensive tool set of any uh, Swiss Army knife out there, but with the tool set you have, it's kind of a direct link to the past. You can trace the lineage of this knife all the way back to the very, very first Swiss Army knife in the 1890s. And now 130 years later, it's still going strong. And this is, this is kind of the, the tool set. This is the genesis of what led Victorinox to becoming the largest knife maker in the world, which they are. You've got four simple tools. You've got your main blade, You've also got an awl here on the back side, And then the other two tools, you've got a can opener here. And the original did have a can opener. It looked very different from this. Uh, it didn't have the secondary uh, flathead screwdriver that you can get out of the tip of this guy. And then on the original, on the opposite side, they just had a single screwdriver. But in this case, you get a bottle opener that also has a screwdriver built in and that nice little wire stripper there at the bottom as well just a solid, solid tool set. It covered the bases, it equipped the Swiss army, helped them uh, maintain their rifles in the field and still going today, man, there there's, I don't know what, what more uh, I can say about it that, that really proves it really cool stuff going on. One of the things I like about their, uh, their bottle openers here is on these ALOX models, which are constructed with a heavier duty aluminum than the, uh, the plasticky scaled versions. You do lose out a little bit on the, you know, classic red Swiss army knife, but the trade-off is worth it to me. But you also get a nice half stop there on the, uh, the cap lifter so that you can apply a little bit more torque to certain screws if you have to, as you're going to town. If you're looking to start on a Swiss army knife and you're not sure, honestly, any of them would be a good place. We were having this discussion earlier about, oh, what do you think of this Swiss army knife or this Swiss army knife? They're all about the same in terms of how good or bad they are. Falls mostly on the side of good, but pick one with the tool set you want and grab it. But the Pioneer is definitely a good place to start. All right, one more Italian for the list today. We come to Viper with their recently released turn model. Uh, this was a hard one for me because Viper does a lot of knives I really like, but there's just something about this particular one that seems different, seems a little bit elevated or, or kind of a game changer for them. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm, it's just my emotions speaking, but this is certainly a beautiful knife. Prices on these start around the $200 mark and you can get G10 or Micarta. Uh, there's also bone options, but the red lava carbon fiber version here, definitely, definitely near the top of the heap. And these guys come in about 250. Blade is about three and a quarter inches, M390, and it's got a really cool, uh, almost custom knife or a custom fixed blade style of blade shape to it, only in this folder platform. Full flat grind, crown spine, very nice. The handles are titanium with integral bolsters there, and then the inlays on the top. And you've got a lock back on this knife, and something that most lockbacks don't typically come with, ball bearings in the pivot. And they've tuned this thing, this whole life, just right so that you can actually flick that knife open with your thumb, which again is something most frame or most back locks kind of struggle with due to the kind of inherent pressure from that lock bar, from that back spring, which acts as the locking mechanism. So whatever witchcraft they, they worked to make this happen, I'm really glad they did it. We've also got a really cool deep carry pocket clip on this guy as well. Buries it nice and deep, although some of the models uh, omit the pocket clip and come with a little belt sheath instead. So keep that in mind if you are shopping for one of these, but man, the lines on this knife doesn't get much better than that. 
All right, getting to the home stretch now, we come to Wee Knife Company, and I had to give it to the Synergy 2. Uh, the Synergy 1, or was just called the Synergy back in the day, was originally made by Speed Tech, uh, and it was an aluminum knife, and it was, if, if I'm remembering things correctly, it was not only the first integrally constructed pocket knife out there, it was also the first pocket knife designed entirely in a computer program, a CAD program, essentially. And because they were able to mill it the way they did, you were able to get some really cool and really sophisticated swells and, and handle shaping going on that are would been would have especially at the time been very difficult to accomplish with most manufacturing methods. Now, obviously, they're not available anymore. Uh, so to see uh, Jim O. Young bring this design back with We Knife Company is pretty cool. It brings a piece of history back to the forefront. Uh, but in this case, it's titanium instead of aluminum construction, and we do have a an integral lock as opposed to a button lock. Uh, but we also got a new blade shape. Instead of just the trailing point, we also have this trailing point Tonto profile available. Now these knives started about 330 for base models with titanium uh, and M390 steel, I believe. This particular one adds inlays, shredded carbon fiber in this case, and a Dama steel blade, which is a powder metallurgy version of a Damascus patterned blade. So you get some really high performance in addition to the really good looks in this case. And it has almost a, the, the bright sections on here have an almost mirror-like quality to them. It's definitely a very highly finished blade. But this whole knife really is kind of a testament to Wii's manufacturing capabilities. And that's kind of what helped this knife rise above the rest of the pack within the Wii lineup, which is by and large very, very good. You've got a lot of fit attention to detail here, a lot of complex manufacturing, and you can absolutely see why Wii is a world-class maker. And finally, bringing up the rear, but only because of their name, Zero Tolerance. And this one was, I, I almost went another direction. Uh, I almost didn't trust my gut on this, but it's gotta be the 562 from Rick Hinderer. This is it, man. This is kind of the, the, one of the classic titanium frame lock flippers that kind of has been a huge, almost outsized influence on the rest of the genre. Uh, modeled very closely, of course, on the uh, Rick Hinderer's classic M XM18 flipper. This is just a fantastic knife as well. This particular version coming in about 260 right now. The blade's three and a half inches, not too big, not too small. You've got a 20 CV blade steel here and a drop point profile with one of Rick Hinderer's signature, uh, signature elements, this slicer grind. And essentially it's kind of a compound angle as you get closer towards the tip, the thickness behind the edge or the angle behind the edge is going to be steeper. So you've got for this bellied section that might be doing a lot of slicing, you've got a more efficient slice right there. And then for the heel of the blade where it gets to be the straight edge where you might feel more inclined to be just really pushing through or powering through a cut, it's a little bit stouter. So you've got a little bit more strength here behind the edge at the heel. And this kind of achieves kind of some of the same things that normally would need a compound grind to pull off without needing an actual compound grind. Now we've got KVT bearings in the pivot, gives it some really nice action, nothing to complain about there whatsoever. We even got a deep carry pocket clip to hold things nice and snug. Now the handle, titanium there on the back, and there you can see that signature lock bar stabilizer that's kind of one of those hinderer signature elements. Front side of this one has carbon fiber, but there are titanium versions, uh, G10 in the past, several different sprint runs over the years, so there's a lot to choose from. And for me at least, the size of this handle is just about perfect. Kind of just like the knife, not too big, not too small. It's just a solid every man's pocket knife that's gonna really, really pull out all the stops when you really need it to perform. All right, that's all from my list today on part two of the best knife from every brand. Make sure to let me know what you thought of my picks. I know some of these certainly are gonna be pretty controversial. Love to hear what you guys have to think and let me know what your picks are for some of these brands as well. If you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to the Knife Center and make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program too. So at least you can earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you put your money down on one of these. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.